Thank you everyone for joining today's public training. Today, our topic is 13 underrated ZK features you should know. So we will talk about uh, some features and most of these features related to components, for example, like various way to input uh, and uh, input with output with multimedia and navigation by anchors. Also how to arrange components in some uh, several different ways and also guide user by notifications. About three state uh, checkbox. So the checkbox has uh, several modes. You can see there's, this is the normal checkbox and there are toggle mode. So you can press that down it or there's a switch mode. You can switch it like uh, you see it in iPhone. And the last one is what I uh, in, want to introduce today is the three states. Uh, that means there are three states. Uh, one is check, is unchecked, and also the partially checked. Uh, this or you call intermediate state. Then uh, usually when you use this kind of state, uh, this mode only available after uh, ZK 9.0. So yeah, beware of the, the version you use. Then you can, uh, when you set this mode, you can, I think you can understand. Usually if it, there's just one checkbox, it doesn't mean anything. If you use this tree state, usually it involves, there are some sub uh, checkbox like this. Uh, in Assume there's uh, uh, the menu, uh, called to check about the sandwich condiments and you could choose to you uh, to include all condiments or you can choose some of it so if i click just one let choose then it will show this kind of symbol a dash like symbol so it means it you just partially selected um, all the sub checkbox you don't such select all of them so you need to, when I select all of them, then it becomes the, the checked. So if I unselect and check all the sub checkbox then the, this main checkbox will become unchecked. So uh, because it involves a multiple checkbox, just not just one checkbox, you usually you need to implement some logic about it uh, with a composer. So let's see how to do it. For example, this is tree state checkbox. Okay, first you need to set the mode to tree state. Yeah, then there are some sub checkbox under it, like this one. And in this case, because I want to, I already create a tree state composer, so you can reuse it if you want to. Uh, if you want to use the same logic like this, like this one, so you can directly apply this composer on your three state uh, checkbox. Then it will give you, uh, it will show you uh, the, the logic like what I showed to you. Uh, if you check some of it, it will show uh, the dashed symbol, dashed icon on it and then clear it. It will clear the main three state checkbox. So uh, what I do is, um, first I talk how to use, if you want to, you can apply this composer, uh, you can copy the composer into your project and use it directly. So first you need to apply it on the tree state checkbox and you need to specify a custom attribute called sub checkbox. This attribute, you need to specify a selector, uh, a component selector. For example, now I use a class as class selector because all, all of my sub checkbox have these kind of selector, have this kind of S class. So uh, in this composer, it would use this selector to locate these sub checkbox. So let's quickly show you how how we implement. For example, the tree component, tree state composer. So this composer will change the tree state checkbox. So if you check and all sub sub checkbox are checked. If you uncheck, they are unchecked. And it also monitoring the check state of a group of sub checkbox. If any of these uh, sub checkbox are unchecked, it will become uh, show intermediate state. 
So uh, actually, you will see this is the checkbox, a uh, tree state checkbox, and there are sub checkbox uh, listener. I create a listener to listen to them. So after, uh, first I will ensure you apply this composer on the tree state checkbox, or it doesn't mean anything. So, and later I will just add the listener for each sub checkbox. So I will create a listener here. So I will use this sub checkbox as a selector to use the selector find if there are a group of sub checkbox. If you find anything then just throw a runtime exception. So because it doesn't fit this use case. So if I found uh, one, more than one sub checkbox, then you will just add a listener for un uncheck. So every time when it, when you click the sub check box, any of it, it will invoke this listener to check all the sub check box. So if all the sub check boxes are checked, like here, yeah, I will just iterate and to find if it's all checked or all unchecked. If it's all checked, and I will set the three state check box to check. If it's all unchecked, I will set it to uh, unchecked. And otherwise, I will just set it to intermediate state. So that's simple. So if I, another listener is to listen three state checkbox, which is the main checkbox, all condiment uh, for uncheck event. So if you check the three state checkbox, I will check them for all, check all the sub checkbox to make it check. If I uncheck, the three, three stage checkbox and I will uncheck all the checkbox. So that is the basic uh, logic of the three stage checkbox and its sub checkbox. So you can apply this composer on your uh, three stage checkbox. So to get the, I think most of the, this is the most common logic you want. So you can uh, easily apply it. So this is the first one. Uh, the three state checkbox. Okay. Then let's go to the, the next one. Next one is the search box. Okay. Search box, it's, uh, let me check. Search box is very, a little bit uh, similar like uh, combo box, but it's different. So it's also available since 9.0. So the first one, as you can see, when you open, you will, when you click, it will open a pop-up. Uh, just like a combo box, you can type something uh, like Asia. But the difference is what you type, uh, in combo box, you type directly yeah. inside the input. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, but in the search box, it allow you you let you input your search keyword in a separate input box, uh, in a separate text box here. So that eliminates the 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 possibility to enter a non-existent item. So we recommend you to use this search box uh, uh, better than using the combo box. Because in combo box you might enter, so if you if you can try, I can show you what's the difference. Um, yeah. So combo box you can see you can type directly inside, but the problem is if you don't set it uh, read only, the user. Uh, a user can type non-existent item. So you can see, you still can type this one. And this one sometimes cause problems because yeah, you only allow them to, you also you want them to, to select three or one of these three items, but he can type something different. Maybe it's a typo, maybe it's he's not mean to be. So that's the usually the most commonly uh, problems that you use combo box you will encounter. So if you just let user, uh, one user to select only, you can set it as read only. So user cannot type anything and just can select to avoid hit type, uh, type incorrect items. 
But the search box doesn't have this problem because you see it allow you to type in a different, in a separate field. So if user type anything non-existent, it doesn't have any available items for him to select. So it's impossible to select a non-existing item. So that's the, the benefits or the advantage. So you can type Asia, uh, oh yes, it's typo. The user will be uh, aware of that, oh, he has a typo. So he doesn't enter a non-existing item. And this is a single selection. So you can even clear it. And this is a placeholder you can type. Uh, so even remember what you have typed last time. So we can see here, okay. Then the second feature is you, you used, it can enable the multiple selection. Uh, for example, like this, multiple selections. So you will, you will show multiple items here and uh, you can type, for example, I want to disable this. Uh, I want to select another one. So it's different. You can also clear them. So we have two ways. Uh, one is single selection, one is multiple selections. And it doesn't uh, make user do some mistakes. Yeah, it doesn't select uh, incorrect or not existing item. So that's the what we suggest you to use search box. Okay. And the uh, usage is still, is very similar. Let's check uh, the search box here. Yeah, I think the basic usage, yeah, you just create a model, this model. We always suggest you to use the ZK list model, no matter it's list model array or list model list and assign it to search box. You can customize how does it render. So the second one you can see, we just assign it as a model and we don't uh, change, you just, uh, render as a building template. But in the second one, uh, in the first one, sorry, uh, we create a template to render a different way. We add a, a global icon, a global icon here. So you can see when I click the drop down, every item, there is a prepended globe earth icon here. That's because we create a custom a template here. And we add the, an icon here, uh, the Z icon, because you can use a uh, phone awesome because the ZK uh, integrated uh, include the phone awesome. So you can see phone awesome 4.7. Uh, awesome. Yeah, you can check uh, phone awesome. But what we in integrate is 4.7. Okay, so you can search for 4.7. Yeah, here. So all these icons you can check here, you can use. So if you see globe, you can see here, there's a globe, it's the same icon. But in ZK, we need to, uh, when we integrate it, we need to add some custom, do some fine tune. So every CSS class here, if you see it's called globe. So in ZK, you need to use, uh, sorry, here, you need to uh, prepend this Z icon dash globe, then it will show globe. Okay, so this is another features that you can customize your uh, items looking rendering. Okay, so this is the uh, second one. Um, okay, the next one, Next one is Cascader. Okay, let's close it. Uh, yeah, the Cascader is also available after ZK 9.0. Okay, the Cascader is used to show uh, a hierarchical data. So for example, like this, you can show this USA have two cities, Japan have two city, New Zealand two city. Uh, surely that you can have more hierarchical level, like three level. This is two levels. So you can have three levels. 
then so if you want to allow user to select an item from a hierarchical structure of data so you can use this cascader so you can select here again japan kyoto like this this is okay oh okay this because it's i i create implement wrong so you can select any of this and uh, the next one another feature is you can even customize how does it look because for example by default you use the slash to separate these hierarchy for example japan slash kyoto but maybe you don't want you want to use this kind of a greater than symbol so you can customize it by implement a converter so you can see here okay so let's see how to do it uh the cascader oh the basic usage you just create a tree model so this is a tree model if you don't uh want if you don't want anything special just use the case default tree model so the default tree model will just accept a default tree node so it's very simple I'll just assign your data here uh, so for the first one is a, is a root root is not uh it's not visible so root is 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 the root of this usa japan and new zealand it's not visible on on this component so you can create any string here and every tree node except two parameter one is the the tree node uh, data and the rest the second parameter is its children. So, okay, the children also have three children. So, each children, we have a new tree node, a new tree node, new default tree node here. So, the first one is the USA, and I create two tree node one is New York, one is Los Angeles, and so, et cetera. So, we create a tree model here as, uh, and assign it to the cascader so that it will show uh, what you. What you see and i you can listen on select to get the results for example there's a result label here so when i call uh, on select it will just get the select the item to string so in this case you can see when i select a japan kyoto by the user new york and this will change because the, there's a label here so that's why uh, i can listen on select to get the result and the second one is I want to um, render the selected result uh, in a different way. So I need to implement uh, my item converter and assign it with this attribute, item converter. So let's see my item converter. How does it look? You need to implement interface. The interface is a general interface. You can see it's just a converter with a convert. And the from and to object type is a generic type. So you need to declare by yourself. And in this case, in this converter, uh, you can declare as a collection. Yeah, because it passed a lot of a collection of objects. So if you, you can set it here. So let's see, for example, when I select Los Angeles, you can see past two objects with size one is user USA and Los Angeles. So I can combine them with uh, this greater than symbol. Okay. So yeah, you just change the, the result become USA greater than uh, Los Angeles. So you can determine what you uh, want to show in text. You can combine or generate it here. Uh, to show your custom custom string or custom text. So this is quite uh, customizable. Uh, just implement a simple item converter. You might see this converter in different place uh, for different components. Uh, so, but it might uh, pass in different um, objects. You so need you need to declare different type. Okay, so this is the two case. One is to use the basic uh with building text and uh, listen on slack to get item and another one is to use item converter to convert to a different uh, selected result okay next one next one is about uh, rate uh, 
printing. Okay. Okay. Rating. Okay. Rating, I think it's easier to understand. Yeah. It's just a, a convenient component to let you use my rate with five star. The default icon is star, uh, five star or one star, something like this. So if when you hover on it, you can see you show the hover, the style change. So it clearly show what you, uh, how many stars you want to rate. So when you click it, it will just fix. So the rating only available since 8.6, uh, DK 8.6. So the first usage is very simple, just uh, set the D4 max and uh, uh, it will render five star icons to let you rate. And you can also uh, change the maximum uh, start, maximum icon you can see here, it's at 10 stars. So because there are, you might require different level. Okay. And the next one um, is you can use, if you don't like start, you want to use some kind of uh, flash bolt here. Okay. So you can see, you can customize the icon with flash uh, bolt here. And another one, this is use uh, the phone also an icon. Yeah. So you can use phone also an icon to quickly change the icon here. But if you don't want, you want something very special icon, you can use CSS to change like this as a gift icon. So it's quite special. Uh, and also there's a cancelable uh, attribute. Uh, when you click the send icon, uh, again, it will be, it will cancel. So you can see when I click the star, it's, I rate four stars and I click it again, it would just cancel all the, all the start. And uh, this is by default is cancelable is true. So it means it will cancel. But if you say cancelable is false, then it means you cannot cancel. You have to rate another level. For example, I choose one star or I choose two star. But if I choose two star, I click it again, it doesn't cancel. It just keep two star. And uh, maybe some users might accidentally click the, the star they don't want to cancel it. You just want them to explicit click a different level to make a rating instead of uh, click the rating uh, to cancel it because user might, sometimes user might want, uh, will, will click to twice. Yeah, just some user just like to click twice for every thing. So if I click twice, this is something very weird. So it will cancel. So for this, you would, it doesn't have this problem. Uh, if you use accidentally click here, it doesn't cancel. So if you like, uh, it's a different behavior. So how to do it? That's quick. It's very simple. There are this component uh, it's very easy to use. So you can see here, rating. By default, it renders uh, five uh, stars and you can set its rating level uh, as initial, so to three. So you can see here, if I reload it, at beginning, it just rate at three uh, stars. So that means the rating. And you can also set rating to five, but your maximum set to 10. That means there are 10 starts. So if you want, if you don't want start, you want something different, you can specify icon as class. Here you can specify the Z icon uh, uh, CSS class, because I just mentioned we uh, integrate the font Austin icon. So you can use any icon in Ball Austin 4.7, uh, just prepend the Z icon with bolt. So Z icon bolt. So you can search for phone answer to whatever icon you want and just use it here. And so you just change the icon. But if you don't want this uh, for all these hundreds of icons in phone and you don't like it, then you can also customize with CSS like this. Yeah, because if you can check, uh, we use the, this to change 
as a special gift uh, gift icons. So I can use it icon as class with my gift icon. So uh, to use CSS to override it. So if you check the with the inspector here, let's put it here. Yeah, you can. If you want to override CSS, be sure to use the inspector. So you can see in the before uh, here, there's a content. That's what I override it. Use a special icon here. Okay. So uh, that's you can do it with very special icon, and you can select uh, by you can customize by whole changing the opacity uh, to different way because when you when you not select, you can see its opacity is 0 0.5 to indicate it's not uh, selected. So when I hover on it, it has different opacity. Okay, so this is the way. And a cancel over is, yeah, I just explained, it just uses static it false, the default is true. So you can decide whether user can cancel a rating or not. Okay. So this is about uh, cancel, uh, no, it's about rating. Okay. Next one, uh, we talk about some multimedia components. Uh, this is about, signature, okay. Uh, the signature you can, uh, just like its name, and uh, it's only available since 8.6, uh, uh, but only available in ZK uh, Enterprise Edition. So uh, just like this name, you can just say it's used to, uh, you can write your signature here. So for first case, first use case, you can control the, the style of the pen. Uh, uh, the usage is quite simple. You can see, for, for example, you can see there are three building uh, buttons here. you can re undo what you write here or you can clear what you write here okay you can also save it uh, we'll show you in the next uh, use case so uh, for first case it show you you can uh, control the pen style there are three attributes to control one is pen color background color and pen size so now i use white uh, here, so I can change it to red. I can turn it to 12 to make it thicker. So um, here, yeah, this is, uh, you can change uh, to different, uh, different style uh, according to your requirement. So this is a signature. And after you, after user uh, sign up that you want to save it as image, you can, here, there's a save it. For example, I uh, just side that here and I click save and we'll fire an upload event to save. So how do we do it? We can listen on save event and uh, I can, the event can get media to get uh, uh, the media, the ZK media object. I can set it to an image to show how uh, the result. So, or you can just get media to get its by the ray uh, or get its uh, ZK uh, A media after to do the further processing, maybe store it somewhere or transmit to a different place. So it's easy to just listen to unsafe event. It actually do something like uploading. Okay, so this is a second uh, use case to save the image. So uh, this block, usually we treat it as a place to uh, to write our signature. But there's another special use case here because we have a, a, a attribute to load a background image. So usually uh, people will just load a background image. For example, you might load a background image with uh, on the line. This is the most cases. Uh, you load an image with one light uh, and user can, oh, he will cite it here. So have user to cite it here. Okay, you will size name here because this is the underline. And this is the most commonly case is, yeah, you load an image with just one line or maybe use a, a image with just signature. Then he will know, okay, he need to assign it here. 
But another case is someone, uh, they want to, for example, they have some paper form here and they don't want to, uh, they have some reasons don't uh, or can turn the paper form into a, into electronic form or cannot design with HTML uh, format. They just scan the paper form. For example, there's some check this, uh, something like here. You just scan the, the paper, the checklist into an image and load it as a background image and let user to cite it here. Okay, and after cite it, we can save this background image with the signature itself. So both create a result here. So you can see there's a check this in with my signature. So that's uh, also another kind of use case. Don't, uh, it's not just use it as a, a signature only. We also use it as kind of a drawing tool. Uh, so uh, let's see how we do it. So first you can see a signature. I can design with, uh, set its width and height according to the image, because usually you will load a, a fixed uh, image. And, <clears throat> You can say here, uh, specify background image to specify your background. Uh, my background is a checklist. Uh, it's a image from, uh, by scanning a paper form. And you can specify the background include true. That means when we save uh, the, the signature, we also save the background image. If you don't include here, and if you don't, if you set it false, for example, That usually means you will just load uh, an underlying image. For example, here, I just cite it here and I save. It only save my, uh, my signature in save uh, without the background image. But for this use case, you I think we need the background image to show that it's a check-in list, uh, checklist here. So I will, we will save it here. Okay, so that's the another use case you can use. Uh, for for with a signature, okay. So this is the uh, signature, and the next one, next one is camera, okay. Camera here, okay. Okay, the camera is sorry. Do uh, Okay. Yeah, the camera is, oh, sorry. We need to close it. Okay. The camera is very special. Uh, you can capture a video or you can capture a, a snapshot. Uh, with the, the camera on the phone or on your computers. And it is also available on 8.6, uh, DK 8.6. And that's the, that's something you need to know is we, um, it's based on, it, it has, it might have some browser compatibility issues. You need to check, does it uh, support uh, media device, get user media or media recall here? So we need to check, uh, we will use this kind of JavaScript API, two parts. You can check uh, the browser behavior, browser compatibility here. So not all the browser can use it, uh, This use this component. And they also have some permission uh, issues. You need to request the permission first. So user can reject it uh, or block it. So first you can see in this demo, it doesn't show any preview image because I don't, request. So if I request, you can see me here. Okay, so, and uh, you can take a snapshot or you can start recording and pause and stop. And there is the here. Okay, so this is the, the show. There are many, uh, several API can use, the, including the start, the pause, the resume, the stop, the snapshot. You can see it's all, uh, we made uh, several APIs to let you control 
the camera. So you can control by Java and to, and there are several events like um, video upload uh, for, so when you uh, on snapshot upload, usually when you uh, click the snapshot, uh, then you will fire on snapshot upload. Then so you can see uh, when snapshot upload, I will set the image so you can see there's a, a image showing on the page because I there's an image uh, component here. So when I click the snapshot, you just capture the snapshot and show it on the page. Or you can see there's a, a video upload. So when I start and stop, when I stopped uh, the camera, it will upload in the video immediately. And so I can see, I can get the media, which is the video, and I set it to a video component here. So you will show the video, I just record and you can play it. So that's the another way uh, to use it. And it also contains some lens limits. For example, it doesn't, Maybe you don't want user to record too long uh, video, so you can limit them to uh, maybe 10 seconds. Uh, so they, if it's exceeding, you will show some arrows. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the camera, the first use case. We provide various API to let you capture screenshot or capture videos. Or sometimes you might want to uh, customize the recurring hint when you uh, hear. Okay, so you can see this is, I will turn it to red. So if you, because when you request, okay, here, start. There's the icon here. When I click, Pause, sorry, pause here. It's a red now, but actually by default, it's white. Okay, this is white. So you can uh, customize the recurring thing by CSS. And you can also enforce a specific camera because um, usually the phone, the mobile phone has two uh, more than one cameras, either a uh, user specific, uh, user facing camera or the front camera or back cameras. So you can request a camera with a specific constraint string. Um, but yeah, I'm using computer so you cannot, uh, there's nothing special here. So, but I'll just to show you, I cannot demo uh, to you, but I'll just show you there's a string. So this is the string that you can used to enforce, to request the, uh, the forcing, the using user, uh, user facing camera, because the mobile phone, if you use the phone to visit here, you might want user to request, to request the camera that you want, because yeah, that's maybe it's your requirement. So if you want this, because this string is not the case uh, spec, it's actually a browser spec. So if you want to know the, the string, there are many kind of string uh, you can check here. Uh, media track constraint. There are many kinds of value here. We just pass to the Java, pass the string you specify. It's a JSON like a JSON format. So you would just pass this uh, the constraint string into JavaScript API to let you control. So it's not ZK, what ZK implement, the browser supported. So you can see, you can, if you want to, I use the user facing camera, you can, this is just an example, but there are lots of other constraints you can specify. So just check the uh, document here. Okay. The last one is, uh, is it just a normal use case? For example, you can combine with a cropper. Uh, there's a use case that uh, you might let user to upload or take their headshot and uh, to store as a headshot picture. But the user may not take a good uh, picture, for example. Uh, yeah, you can open here and I click it. You will take a picture with your cropper and I just crop here to with my headshot. So this is another usage that combine with 
proper. So you can create a, a vacation a function to create the headshot. Okay. So this is a very, I think it's a common use case, uh, easy to implement. So you can see uh, this is a camera. If you want to uh, request the permission uh, when user load it, you just here on create call self request camera. Then uh, for for normal user uh, will see a dialogue that uh, this page will request uh, the camera, do you want to accept it or reject or block it? So you can just click to call to get the snapshot. And after the snapshot load, we just set it to cropper here. So cropper will get an image taken by the camera. And then you can just use a box to crop uh, at, at your head and then set it to an image. So this this feature can easily be implemented by these three components, camera, proper image. Yeah. OK. So this is camera. And the next one is video. I think it's uh, also easy to understand. Yeah, you can just display, uh, play a video. Um, the first attribute I want to introduce is the autoplay. Yeah, the autoplay, if you set it true, it will automatically dis uh, play the video, but it has uh, some limitations. So it's not always you can autoplay uh, a video in any page, uh, in any browser. So uh, different browser have different limitations, yeah. You can see here. Uh, so you also require HTML5, uh, browser support HTML video tag because underlying is support, uh, it's implemented by a video tag. And you only support these three format. The autoplay doesn't always work. Uh, so you need to check there are different policy for different browser, but most case, I uh, remember in most cases, if you mute, the mute video is always, you always can play. So if you check here, uh, this is a mute, mute, it's a mute video. So if you, I reload it again, you can see auto played it here. But if you, uh, I didn't set mute to true, if I set it to false and I reload again, you can see the the Chrome does not allow it to autoplay here. So it doesn't autoplay. So every browser have its own uh, policy to uh, limit autoplay features. You need to get notice. And uh, we provide API, uh, the live stream question I will answer later, yeah, it's support. So the next feature is about to enable full screen. Although there's a control here. If you specify control, it will show the control here. Uh, so we can see there's a control true. If I don't, uh, if maybe I don't want user to control it, I can set control false for here. You can see there's no way to control it. So uh, what I can provide, I can provide some button here, full screen uh, to to enable the full screen. Okay, so this is another another way, or I can control the video to jump to the 10 seconds. Uh, this is another API. You can set the current time, uh, 10 seconds. So this is the, the features. And the state change event is when, when it state, when the state change, because for example, like when I click to play and uh, you can see it, it show played here. If I click pause and it show pause here, so uh, the, when the state change, it will show, uh, you will fire a state change event and you can listen to state change to do something further, uh, further processing here. Okay, in, this, in my case, I just show uh, a, ma a message here. So this is a state change event. And the, someone asked about the streaming. Yeah, you can specify a, a 
the link to to remote and also display here. So this is kind of a, a display to play a video from remote here. Okay. And the next one, you can add some track to load uh, subtitles. So for example, here you can see uh, there's a subtitle here. And you can even change there are different uh, locale. Uh, now I just load two locale. One is English, one is China, uh, Chinese. Yeah, so you can see. Yeah, you can also load subtitle captions. Then you need to specify uh, the child component track and defines what well, its kind is captions, source languages, English, and you need to specify the file here is a VTT format. We support this format only. So if you check the VTT here, you can see it's its format, like uh, time and the content, the subtitles, time, subtitle here. So just prepare these two files to let you that the track and load these two files. And remember to specify at least one track to default true so that it will load it or it doesn't know which file to load. So you can show the, the subtitle in a, in a video. Okay. Oh, you mentioned an RTSP protocol. RTSP protocol. So, okay, I, yeah, I'm not sure. So I will check it later to see if we can support any uh, real time screen uh, video. If you can send me any um, tasking video, I can try. Yeah, thank you for your question. Uh, okay, then. Next one, next one of the next one video is a PDF viewer, PDF viewer, okay. Uh, let's see. The PDF viewer, yes, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, yeah, basically it's just, uh, it's a PDF viewer to let you uh, view the PDF, uh, show the PDF file and it contains the building uh, toolbar here. So you can rotate it uh -huh, and you can click the next uh, previous page or directly change the page. You can zoom in or zoom out. Okay. Uh, zoom in, zoom out. I said the uh, fixed width uh, is too large. Uh, yeah, too large. So like fixed width or fixed height. So, or just make it full screen. Uh, so yeah, it's very a convenient component. Just let you most, I think most of the features that you that you need is here. Yeah, this is the first case. So how to do it? It's quite simple. Just PDF viewer SRC build. Okay, your PDF file. So it load and by default, it it will show this uh, building toolbar here. So this is the default case. The next case is you can specify it's on Zoom. Uh, this is Zoom to fit. Uh, there are several cases, fit page width or fit page height. So you can set pitch, fit page width here. So you can see, yeah, this one is fit page width. So it becomes larger fit page width here. So this is uh, the features. And the next one, you can just, yeah, provide a custom toolbar. If you don't want user to use all the building toolbars features, you can provide your own toolbar. For example, just I just want them to, yeah, I don't want them to rotate. I just want to uh, next page or previous page, something like this. So I create a toolbar uh, with my own. So I can, this is the only child component it set. Just a toolbar, toolbar button was the first page with API here, so I can, you will show this toolbar on the, on the PDF viewer. So that's also a way, and you can make it as a full screen, full screen API, because it's totally a uh, client side uh, behavior. So we now we only provide a client side JavaScript API. So to toggle full screen here, so you can, 
uh, made a button to make it uh, become full screen. Okay. And it's also, you can make it, if you don't want to show them all, for example, maybe it's the, the video, the, the PDF is too large, you want to sh partially show it. So you can specify its height to, it will also automatically produce a vertical scroll bar here to let you, uh, to show this, you can see here. And when you scroll down and you will scroll to the next page. Okay. So if you keep scroll down, you will switch to another, the second page. Okay. And surely it can dynamically load the content. You don't have to specify a fixed uh, a path. Uh, you can load this file uh, from Java. So for example, let's see the code here. You can see I don't specify any source path here. I just load it by our oh, controller. So the controller here, yeah, it's Java. So I just load a PDF file. I create uh, a media component, uh, sorry, a media objects. I load this file from the past. You can load it from any place, place in your system, maybe from database and uh, create a media and assign it to a PDF viewer component. Then it will show it. So this is the way, uh, the way to show it, to load it, the content dynamically, not a fixed pass. Okay, so this is the, the PDF viewer. The next one is AnchorNav. Okay, the AnchorNav is a navigation component. Yeah, so you can, you can see, I can create a link or button and it will scroll to the corresponding anchor. Uh -huh. So when I click this link, it will just scroll it. Uh, this is the first case to scroll the whole page. So anchor nav here, you can see, uh, you can create anchor nav. And I, basically you just, just need a, a anchor component or uh, or a button. So the this buttons just use it to here, just uh, the layout purpose. We just, I just laid it, put it inside a list box for uh, good looking. So you can even remove it, it's also fine. You don't need a list box to, uh, to show this uh, link. So because it's totally a uh, client side behavior, uh, server side doesn't aware of, doesn't keep this position. So you just need to declare a namespace. Say uh, it's a client side attribute. So uh, we have a date car anchor net target, uh, which is a window one, two, three. This is a class, uh, a window, a client which is class uh, selector. So this is because uh, the dollar sign means it's components ID is window one, window two, window three. So just specify this attribute and that's enough. And uh, sure, you need to put this anchor inside the anchor nav. So then if you put this, use this component, you will monitor the page scrolling. Okay, so that's the, uh, the first case. And when you click this anchor, uh, then you will scroll to the corresponding position of the uh, widget here. And the next one, uh, the next, this is the first case of page scroll. And the second usage is to container scroll. Uh, so maybe you don't want to scroll the whole page. You, will, you want to scroll the uh, specific container. For example, this uh, black border box and the second window here, third window, one window. I just, you can see, I don't scroll the whole page. I just scroll the, the container inside this black border box. Okay, this is the second kind of usage. So you can see here, I can use button. Surely you can change it to anchor. Uh, it's also fine. Uh, so remember, just put it, so for example, I can put it here, like it's, just, it's, it's also, anchor also works, okay. So you can use anchor or button, uh, depends on you. So I put it in the anchor nav. Yeah. The difference is you need to give it, this anchor nav a name, if you want to scroll a container. In a previous usage, you don't need to give it a name, uh, just, you will just scroll the whole page. But if you give it a name, you need to associate with this anchor nav with the container. So with this one, data anchor nav scroll. 
the A1 is the name of the, uh, the anchor net. So this will associate these anchor net with this container div. And so every time when you click this anchor net target, you will find the target inside here. So you can see the ID W1, W2, W3, W1, W2, W3. Okay, so here. So I will, it will locate those corresponding which DOM, uh, which is DOM here. So ink one, two, three. Okay, so you only scroll this container because I associate these two, this anchor net with this. Okay, so this is the, how you can use the anchor net to scroll your page or scroll a container. Uh, yeah, to provide more convenient uh, user experience. experience. Okay, next one, it's about input group. Uh, the input groups, uh, I think you might see something similar in Bootstrap. So I think it's just very easy to understand. It just can pre-append or, uh, or prepend or append some uh, text or labels in a input uh, box, uh, like text box. So you can prepend something like here and you will combine them, connect them together. So it looks like they are in one uh, box, uh, not two separate box. Usually, normally, if you put a label in front of a text box, the label and text box are separated. So you can see the label here. And, uh, so it can show user some information and say, oh, maybe if I type hawk, that means the server might get you will get hawk at example.com. Or if I type here, I know this is a dollar instead of a, just a normal uh, number. Uh, just it's a means a dollar. Or you can also uh, combine with a checkbox or combine with the text area and even combine with multiple input, uh, first name, last name, something like this, uh, chain. Or even multiple add-ons, you can have dollar uh, and other things with buttons, or even button groups. Yeah, and it's very to you easy to use. So for basic uses, you can see, yeah, just put input box outside of the text box and label. Okay, and I just put label here. So with this kind of usage, yeah, the ZK will automatically uh, combine them into one box here. Yeah, and if you put text box and the label after it, uh, so you can see ZK will put it, well, appending the labels with the text box together. Uh, so you can put it before, after, ZK will also uh, combine them together into one box. So for those input components, you can put it inside input group, then ZK will combine them together. Uh, even with the text box, uh, text area, or you can put it in multiple label and text box. Okay, so if you want to use button groups, it's also the same. Just put the button inside input group. So ZK will combine them. So you can see on the left button, you will have border, ra border radius. But in the center button, it doesn't, you removed the border radius. So it will look like it's just a square angle box. So they become uh, connected together, merged together. So you can also use kind of options like combo box. You can even change to change this orientation. Yeah, to become vertical box. Uh, so it's very uh, easy, just set orient vertical. Then the box will arrange by uh, vertical order. Okay, next one is the drawer. Okay, drawer is a very as uh, a very special uh, a component that you will show some uh, show some infos by uh, sliding in and out on the four H could be on top, on right, on left, on button. Uh, so first, the simple usage is you can click, uh, you can trigger uh, an event 
uh, uh, sorry, to not trigger to call, it's unopened. So you can see info unopened here. So uh, uh, open here, when I click the button and invokes open, it will just open a drawer. And the position depends on, the, the default position is on the right. Uh, so you can see there's a drawer called info. So when I call open, it will show some fire information here. So you can see it's a fire information. Okay. So when I click any place here out of the, uh, the drawer, it will just close. Something uh, the behavior very similar like pop up, but it's uh, looking different. And there's a second second feature is about it's called auto drop. Uh, auto drop means if you close to the edge of the uh, drawer, then it will show it like this. Uh, this auto drop show I auto drop drawer. Uh, when I close, because I the default position is on the right edge, so when I close the on the edge of the right, you can see it will open. Okay, so this means auto drop, and this is open by clicking a button, and this is open by close it. Okay, and so you can also define a different place like position button. Okay, so you can see it shows on the on the button. Okay. And uh, you can see there's an animation effect. So it, it suppose uh, because it support the attribute, the data attribute data animation speed. So you can control the speed of the animation. If you don't want the animation, for example, you think it's unnecessary, you can set it to zero here. So data animation speed, if you set it to zero, then there means there's no animation. So if you see, I click here, you can see it just suddenly appear. There's no sliding animation. Uh, I'm not sure if you you can uh, see this effect by the screen sharing because maybe there might be some delayed. So you can try it uh, in your local environments. Okay, so there's an animation and this does not have any anima uh, animation. Okay. So, or even I can make it very slow. Yeah, like this, okay, not, not so slow. So you can control the animation effect, okay? So this is the, uh, the drawer. It, it arranged the, the components, the different positions and show them, okay. And the next one is come bump. Uh, the comma actually is not a one component. Actually, is uh, combined by two components uh, here. Uh, it's combined by two components. One is portal layout, and one is panel. So it's something you can first you can drag the panel to a different place. For example, it's a to do. So I, if I'm I'm, I'm running, the, I'm doing this task and make it to active, or I, if I complete it, I just move it to complete, just like a, like a Kanban. Uh, so you can make it uh, with existing ZK components uh, to do this kind of uh, Kanban board, like you, if you know Trello's, uh, some of my use Trello's, uh, something like this. This is a service. Uh, online service uh, with Kanban's, so we can move it. But yeah, I, because I have only read, uh, read only permission, so I cannot move it. But yeah, so it's something similar like this. You can build by ZK. So uh, let's quickly show you how to do it because it's a little bit um, bigger. So you can see here it combined with uh, portal layout, as portal children, uh, and for each to create multiple uh, panels. So in every panels, I pass in an object. And this counter visible means it will show the how many panels in, in this portal layout, uh, in this portal children. So you can see there is a two here. Uh, if I move it, then it become one. This means the counter visible. It will show how many panels inside this portal children. Okay, so, um, you can see just use a panel 
And this Kanban panel actually is just a panel components. And we pass an object called items and the item uh, here in names items each. And so I can use their binding to load items, task name, task description to show each item's content. And on the button of the panel, I have a, a image to show its headshot. And also I use a, a tag, a tag template to show tag. So you can see here, if you see the demo, there are multiple tag here and a headshot here. So it's used by shared elements. And a tag template actually is just a label. You can see a label uh, with S class and it will change determine its background by CSS style and the background color with tag colors. So each tag component here, uh, there's a tag object here. It's uh, just a data component, uh, sorry, a data objects that is not the case. You can create your component, uh, your objects, your class to store the tag and the color label and the render here to decide the background color of each tag. So this is uh, the Kanban you can create by existing component by pull layout and panels. Uh, you can use MVC or MV MVN and customize by uh, CSS. It's uh, surely that this only uh, demonstrate a, a read only, uh, read only or display only Kanban board. So you can create other features like add a button to create new task car, uh, something else. So just demonstrate the idea. Okay, the next one, next one, it's the coach mark. Okay, the coach mark. Search. Okay, not here. Coach mark. Okay, this is the coach mark is something like a special pop up, uh, but it always usually will specify a target on it. So it will show you, yeah, uh, use it as to as a guideline to guide users say, oh, please click here. Uh, for example, for those newcomers that first time visit your application, you might guide, want to guide them to know how to use your platform. So you might show something and or even enforce them to click this button. For example, maybe this is the first step I need to, I hope user can click it. So you can see when I load this page by default, you will just show that. And there is a blocking mask. You can see the gray blocking mask. So I don't, I cannot interact with other components in the page. I must click this button or I can click, got it. Uh, I can also, you will also display, uh, or oh, I need to click close. So it's a, it's a coach mark. Uh, the purpose of a coach mark uh, is to guide user to do something, uh, what you want them to do. And this is only also available in 9.0. And the, the usage is very simple. You can see, uh, for example, if this is the button you want user to click, and you need to specify the ID, a target with the ID of the button. And then you can, yeah, the coach mark inside, you can treat coach mark is some kind of special pop-up. So you can put some information inside it, uh, label buttons. And you can see um, there are two events. Uh, no, sorry, one event called on target click means if someone click the targets, then you will trigger an event of coach mark. Then you can maybe, yeah, usually you will just close the coach mark or you can show the next coach mark. Then I will show you later. So, or you can just provide a button inside the coach mark when someone click it, just close your cell. So let's see the next usage is to, there are multiple steps. For example, you want user to click step one here step two here, step three here. So this is the, usually you will, if it involves multiple steps, you want user to uh, to 
to perform the step by your uh, your guidance. So you can see there's a blocking mask here. I cannot click other steps. I must click step one and then click step two and click step three, something like this. So user will be guided by this coach mark. So how to do this? First, you can see, I just specify a target. Every coach mark I specify. This is what's convenient. You don't have to do this in the EL. You can do it by specifying an ID. Okay, I just will do it for convenience. And the, pro, the key point is to specify the next uh, coach mark. For example, next is mark two and this ID here, mark two. And uh, next after mark two is mark three, something like this. So every coach mark have its target. So mark two target is step two. Mark three target is step three. Okay. And every time when target is click, yeah, I just call the next target. Sorry, next mark. So this call next will just open the next coach mark. And because the first time I just want to show the coach mark mark one. So I was I need to set mark two to visible false, so visible mark three to visible false. So it won't start at the beginning. Uh, if you don't set it, uh, the visible is true, then it will show the coach mark at the beginning when the page is, is loaded. So that's why when I load this page, it will show here step one, a uh, two, and three. But if I don't want this, I want user to trigger uh the coach mark, they mean, for example, like this, start teaching me because I don't, because the user might want to do, I, I allow user to do something else and maybe I want to uh, let him trigger. So start teach me, okay, step one here, step two here, and step three here. So you can set how, how to do it. You need to set all the coach mark visible to false. So it doesn't show up uh, at page loading. And only when you click the button, for example, start teaching me button, the unclick, it will just open the mark one. And then uh, mark, two, mark one will trigger the mark two, then mark two will trigger mark three, something like this. So this is another use case like uh, uh, that user to trigger the coach mark. Okay, so this is another use case. And uh, okay, next one. Uh, which is the last one is about the toast. Okay, toast is also uh, actually it's not a component. It's kind of utility methods. So if you check this uh, demo, you can see uh, it's very like it's very similar like a notification, but the notification will override the previous uh, message. But the toast will just like toast. You will just stick. Uh, on it. So if you click, there are multiple uh, messages, like maybe you have system error, system log, you want to show user or some system message, you want to show them all instead of overriding the previous one, you can use toast. And you can, just like notification, there are several, there are three different kind of toast. It's a warning, it's an error, yeah. And you can make it closable like this. If you make it closable, you have to close it by yourself. For simple toes, you just disappear after some period of time. Uh, so, and closable, it doesn't close. You have to close it by, sale, by yourself. Yeah. And you also can determine it by the, it's, uh, determine its position, like uh, the right here uh, or the left. Okay. And why I say it's not a, a component because it's uh, just like a, sorry, toes here. If you check its code uh, here, the toes is actually a static method to let you call show. Uh, and there are several, uh, three different overload methods to show the message. Uh, this is info message. And you can control uh, with its label. Uh, so with this type, it could be warning or error. And you can also control its duration or it's closable or not. 
So there are three different kinds of methods to let you call, even you can control its positions. So it's a utility methods, which is convenient to show uh, the uh, some message to user, it will stack up. Uh, it's different from notification and notification is very similar. You can use notification, oh, sorry, not this one. Uh, notification uh, show. So you can see it's very similar like notification or you can use message box. Okay. So uh, this is the uh, all the components and features I want to uh, introduce today. But uh, if you want to know the uh, roundable example today, so you can find it in this ZK books, the calls ZK books, and there is a project called Component Reference. Uh, you can find all the details in our documentation Component Reference, and all the roundable example in this project called component reference under ZK books in GitHub. And in this repository, you can also find other vulnerable example for other books like developer reference, MVVM reference or client reference. So yeah, if you want to run it by yourself, it's very uh, easy to look. You can just run it by uh, MVN and Jetty run, uh, start by run Jetty server. So you don't need to install anything, just need to uh, install Maven, and uh, that's all. Okay, so uh, is there any questions for today? You can type your questions in the chat channel or you can uh, mute your mic to speak out your questions. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the component reference, you can just uh, go into our website and ZK documentation here and Click the reference here, you can find it in component reference here. So uh, there are all ZK components. For example, you can find coach, coach mark here. Uh, so to look for the details, or uh, you can check the documents, uh, Java docs for each setters. So uh, that's if you want to know some details. Every attribute uh, someone might not know, every attribute in a components, for example, the attribute targets, there is a corresponding getter and setter in its Java component. So if there is an attribute called target, that means there is a setter set target and a get target methods in a component. So you can also check Java docs or check these for some use case here. Okay, if no one has uh, more other question, then let's end this training today. Okay, thank you very much for joining this training today. Uh, stay tuned for our next uh, next training and uh, we will uh, notify you, we'll publish you, stay tuned to our website. Okay, thank you, bye-bye everyone. Thank you for joining.